Okay. Okay. My name's Colleen Sloan. I'm the author of the Log Cabin series of Dutch Oven Cookbooks. This is not new to me. I've been doing this all my life. Uh, I think I was about five and a half or six years old when I saw my great-grandfather do it, and it looked like too much work, so I didn't want to do it. So Grandma said, you come in the house, I'll teach you how to do it in the oven in the house. It's a lot easier. So um, she had this saying. She said all of us girls had to learn to cook because cooking wears out, but kissing don't. So we all had to learn how to cook. So we went in the house, and I started it that way. The first thing I ever did in a Dutch oven was fry bacon, which I love. So we decided we would, um, Grandma would teach us how to do this black forest cake, and honestly, to this day, I still can't make it like Grandma did, but I try. Um, I've cooked all my life. I started teaching cooking classes to the Boy Scouts when I was 19 years old, because my dad was a scoutmaster, and at that time, they had a cooking merit badge. They took it out for about 25 years, and now it's back, so it's a cool thing, but I get to teach to scouts. I've done that all my life. I got 52 years in scouting, so I've been around for a while. It's just part of the stuff that I love to do. So um, cooking to me is um, a hobby. So I never have trouble going to work in my kitchen. Um, I love doing the shows and the demos and the things out and talking to people. I just want people to cook in a Dutch oven because uh, we've done a lot of things with the uh, um, University of Utah and their extension service and we found out that cooking with the Dutch oven you save 88 to 92 percent of your vitamins and nutrients so it is the healthiest kind of cooking. The other thing is, I don't know out there how many of you have taken iron pills, but an iron pill to me is terrible because you burp it and then have to take six Alka-Seltzer to get rid of the taste. So I'd rather get the iron out of my cast iron which is what I normally do and when you cook in a cast iron pot the vitamins and nutrients in your food are absorbed with that iron. So uh, it's digested a lot better by your system, your uh, filtering system, your liver and your kidneys and that. So you get uh, about 75 to 80 percent of the iron that's in that food. So it's, it's a healthy, healthy way to go. Been traveling in the United States all over, um, doing Dutch oven contests and stuff. Um, if I had a lot of time, I'd tell you a lot of stories. So hopefully you'll get on the internet and go to my uh, to Camp Chef's blog. It's Colleen's Corner and it's called Where's Colleen Today? So it'll give you my schedule. Uh, I'm in and around a lot of towns. So if you're out there and you can come and visit me, I'd love to see you. Uh, one thing you have to remember when you cook with cast iron is that um, if you can read, you can cook. So if you can learn the possibilities of cast iron, the placement for your heat and stuff, you'll find out it's very simple to cook in these you can put soap in them, you can wash them, you just have to remember to wash it, rinse it off with good hot water so the soap releases from the grease. And um, the only missing ingredient that I can think of in all those recipes is love, so remember to add a lot of love. How's that? How long have you been involved with IDOS? Oh gosh, I helped Dick Michaud write up the bylaws, so ever since IDOS has been here, I've been involved with it. Um, I got super, super involved. Um, pushed the last couple of years to do a lot of things with IDOS, but I got to tell you, this is a family of people. If you can get into IDOS, you got two families, so if you're having an emergency and you need an IDOS person, or you got one living close to you, get with them, because boy, they know how to cook in an emergency. They can make anything taste good. Colleen, you, you've uh, pretty well known for uh, understanding the composition and history and how Dutch ovens came to pass. What, uh, how'd you get started in, in, in becoming the person people come to when they, when we talk about antique iron? Um, I guess the part that really got to me at first was my grandmother had about six pieces that she'd brought, her family had brought from England. And she brought out with the pioneers, uh, my great-grandmother brought them out with the pioneers and my grandma got them and nobody in the family wanted them because they were too heavy to cook with. So I inherited them and um, it's really funny because today my family always say to me, remember all that old iron grandma used to have? What happened to it? I say, darn if I know. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> but I just hang on to it. Yeah, cast iron's got a lot, a lot of history. Nobody really knows where the first cast iron pot was ever made. It's um, kind of a mystery because it's actually spoken and referred to in the Bible as the Black Cauldron. 
Um, a lot of the old African villages used to have a big old huge black cauldron in the center of the village. They build fire around it and then whatever they had, any weeds or, or uh, herbs or anything that they had around or fruits or berries or uh, roots off of the trees and stuff, they'd throw in and cook up as soups and stuff with the meat and the bones and things. So cast iron's been around for a long, long time. They actually found a couple of pieces in the caves with the Dead Sea Scrolls when those were found. So you'll find cast iron out there. And you know, it, it really amazes me because I get a lot of questions about cast iron and and um, what's the best kind and what have you. And i got to tell you, it's all the same iron. It's all the same ingredients. The difference is in the quality control. And um, in my opinion, um, on the market right now, to me, the one that's most affordable and easiest is Camp Chef to get to. Um, it's best one I've found to use. Um, it, the top two on the market would be Camp Chef and Lodge. There's um, some of the others don't have quite the quality control, and uh, but cast iron's out there, and um, I'm amazed at how many sell. <laughs> um, I thought by now the world would be so heavy we'd be living in South Africa and China, but <laughs> fall right through the earth. But there's a lot of iron out there, and there's a lot of good iron. The older cast iron, the real collectible items are the Griswold and the Wagner and Balto and Majestic and some of those, so it's a it's a great piece to have in your home. You can use it on your stove, I don't care if it's gas, I don't care if it's electricity, I don't care if it's a smooth top corning uh, gas uh, stove, you can still use your cast iron if you're careful. You just can't move it around on your uh, glass top stove or you'll scratch it. So other than that, it's been around a long time. <laughs>